Hello everybody, I am here to teach you about something new, probably to you, called interval notation, and then introduce you to also um, two words which you may have heard before, domain and range. So to begin with, I'm going to remind you of something you should be used to seeing, and that's inequalities. So here we have on our first example, x is greater than 2. So if x is greater than 2, that means we're talking about all the numbers bigger than 2, like 3, 3.5, 4.57, all of those numbers. I'm going to represent them on a number line before I introduce interval notation. So if we're talking about all the numbers greater than 2, that does not include 2. So I'm actually going to put a circle around 2 to mean that we're not including it. And I'm going to shade above here. So those would be all of the numbers greater than 2. Now for those of you who might get confused by inequalities, you will love interval notation because it makes a lot more sense, I think. I don't know why we don't learn it earlier. And here's how it works. Whenever we're talking about an interval of numbers, so an interval is a group of numbers, a lot of times it's so many numbers we can't actually list them. We want to always start with the lowest possible number. So I'm going to start with 2, and we're talking about all the numbers all the way up to whatever this is going up to, which is infinity. So I'm going to put 2 comma infinity, and then we're going to use a special symbol to represent that we don't want to include 2, and that's going to be the parenthesis. Okay. If we did want to include 2, we would use the bracket, and that's what we're going to do on the next example. But another thing I want to talk about is the concept called infinity. So infinity, you have to think of as a very, very large number. But it's not actually a number, because we can always think of a number bigger than it. So it's, it's more of an idea. And since we can't put a cap on it, we're also going to use a parenthesis to show that it doesn't really have any bound. It just keeps on going. It gets bigger. Okay, so on our next example, we have x is less than or equal to 2. So that would be the number 2. So that's how I'm going to uh, fill in the circle on 2. But we want all the numbers less than it. So we're going to go this way here. And now let's practice writing our interval notation. What's the smallest number on the number line that would have been shaded in. What number is down here? It's not infinity, but it's very similar to it, and that number is negative infinity. We're going towards the negative end of the number line. So we're going to write down negative infinity up to the biggest number we want to include, which is 2. And like I said, when we want to include something, we're going to use this bracket. And we'll put a parenthesis on negative infinity since there really isn't an end to it. We, don't, we can't include it yet. Okay. And for our last example with interval notation, ooh, we have two things. We have x is less than or equal to negative 1. Let's work on that. So if we're equal to negative 1, we can shade that in. And we're less than that, so we're going to go this way, right? All the numbers that are below it. But now, we also have or x is greater than 3. So we're going to put both of those things on this number line. We don't want to include 3, and we want everything bigger than it like that. So when we write our interval notation to describe this number line, it's going to have two pieces. Again, we're going to start with the lowest amount. What's the lowest number over here? That's negative infinity. Put a parenthesis on that. It goes up to negative 1, which we're going to include. Then there's this gap 
Then we go up to 3, which we're not going to include. And then it ends all the way at positive infinity. Whenever you have multiple pieces, you're going to connect them with a U. And that U is actually U for union, okay? which in math really means and. So we're going to include all of those things. All right. So now that we've practiced interval notation, it's time to talk about domain and range. Domain are all of the inputs I'm going to also call them the x values of a function. So, if I'm looking at this graph below, what are all of the x values that are paired with a y value? So, for example, this point right here is the x value negative 5 it's been paired with negative 2. This value right here is negative 3. It's been paired with negative 4. Ooh, what about negative 1? Look at this. There's nothing paired with it. So that can't be part of our domain. So only the x values that are part of this piece and the x values that are a part of this piece are going to be in our domain. So our domain we're going to use interval notation to answer the question. Is going to start with the lowest x values that we can have. Now, I know my graph only goes as low as negative 10, but remember on the number line above, we called all the numbers over here, they're, if I'm going in this direction, they're really approaching negative infinity. So our domain here is negative infinity all the way up to whatever this x value was, oh, it is negative 3, including it. We have another piece, so we're going to connect it with a u. This piece starts with an x value of 2, including it, and goes all the way up here. But remember, we're not looking at the graphs going up, we're looking at what the x values are. So if this graph's going this way forever, the x values keep getting bigger, and they're getting closer to positive infinity, like that. All right, so on the other hand, we have range. And range would be all of the outputs of a function. Or in other words, the y values. So remember, domain, x values, range, y values. So again, we're going to use our interval notation to talk about the range of this graph. And we're going to start with the lowest possible y value. So let's look at this graph. What's the lowest point on this graph? That's right here. What is its y value? It's negative 9. That means it's the lowest y value that's going to start off our range. What are the highest y values on this graph? Well, they are from points all the way up here, and they keep going up and up and up. This axis, the y-axis, is approaching infinity as we look up this way. So it's going closer to infinity here. We're going to say the range is negative 9 to infinity. Let's do some more practice. So here's an example, and I want us to do domain and range. Remember, domain, we have x's, range, we're looking at the y's. So for the domain, we're looking here. The leftmost point has an x value of negative 7. The rightmost point has an x value of 8. That's it. That is our domain, negative 7 including it to positive 8 including it because everything else in between had a point. Now let's do our range. The lowest point has a y value of negative 8. 
the highest y value up here is at 5. On our second example, notice it has arrows on both ends. So here, this graph keeps getting points are all the way down here. Now remember, domain, we're looking at the x values. What are the x values of points that are going to be off the graph over here? What's the x value of this point? Oh, what's over here? What is this x axis approaching? Negative infinity. So our domain is going to be negative infinity. Oh, let's check out the x values on the other side. Now let's go this way. What's the highest x value that we have? I'm going all the way over here. What's its x value? What's it correspond to on this axis? Positive infinity. So this one went from negative infinity to positive infinity. I think the same thing's going to happen on the range, don't you? Look at this. Look at these points. What are their y values as we get further and further down? Well, their y values are, are approaching down here on the y-axis. That's another negative infinity. Again, up here, what are the y values of these points going up and up and up and up? Well, if I looked over here, looked on the y-axis, they'd be getting really close to positive infinity, at least the idea of it. So we'll write that in. In our last example, notice we don't have any points that have been connected. That can happen sometimes. I'm going to go back to the definition of domain. It's the set okay, of all of the inputs or the x values of a function. So since I only have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five points, my domain only can have five x values. We're going to list them out. Negative two, zero, be careful with this point. Remember that its x value is zero. The next one would be at 1, then 3, then 5. There's the 1, the 3, and the 5. There are my 5x values. The only thing we like to put on um, a set of numbers like this would be curly brackets. Okay, We use those when we're just listing some separate um, values from the domain. We're going to use those same brackets for that range. Do you think you know what the range is? Remember that range is about the y values, so we're going to start with the lowest y value. So here's the lowest point, and the y value is negative 3. Ooh, look at this one. This is a little weird. This point and this point both have a y value of 1. Since they have the same thing, you might want to write it twice. Don't do that. We don't like to repeat numbers in the range. If it's there once, we're fine. Same thing for the domain. Then our next y value would be at 3, and the last one would be at 4. From these points right here, there, that's a y value of 3. That has a y value of 4. So you may not feel completely comfortable with this, but I would suggest maybe even watching this video through again. See if you could do the answers on your own without looking at the video or your notes. You know, give it a pause. But we're going to do a whole lot of practice with this in class. So we'll see you then.